Yehova Malak, Olam Olamad, Yehova Malak, Yami Rakis, Yehova Gadol, Makarian Tios, Yehova Edonai, Yehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Panta Creta, Kurios Tios Pistos, Alda et Yehova, El Emuna Yehova, Ibaslian Kurios, Otios, O Panta Creta, Basilios Basilian, Kai Kurios Kurion, Yehova Elohim, Dabar Halal, Edonai Yehova Elohim, Dabar Halal, Yehova Gadol, Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Kebura, El Elohim Israel, Yehova Adonai, Gadol Gadol Kebura, Derek Emuna Bakar, Meshvat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. And for instruction in righteousness or training in righteousness. That the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkano, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding that the commandments of our Lord of our God, the prescription demands what he has demanded for us in the Bible, they stand and abide forever and this commandments what they have been given for us they are our life and the sole purpose of our survival on this earth is nothing but to absolutely fulfill this mandate the grace that has been given for us is to found in the presence of Lord God the holy Lord God the holy ones as he said in revelation chapter 3 that he would confess our name before Father and His angels. And He would make us also not to blot out the name from the book of life. So in order to do so, we need to walk with Him in white. The word white is nothing but splendid glory. And how we can be with Him in splendid gloriness? Until and unless we walk in fulfilling the commandments of God in the way what he has said, no matter what, he said for us in John 15, 14. Obey my mandates. And that is what we have to do. Obeying the mandates of Lord God, if we truly love him, no matter what. Whatsoever, he said, whatsoever he has mandated, that we have to perform it. Then we will be the ones walking with him in white. And then he will not blot out our name from the book of life. Dear brethren, the things which have been prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past, having the privacy of our priesthood to confess our sins, and getting back in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because the word of Lord God teaches to us, moment by moment, breath by breath. We have to be always in the, in the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because the flesh is always enmity with the Lord. And we who are flesh-minded, he said in Romans 8, 6, though we are alive, we are as good as dead. But in First Corinthians, it teaches to us, we all being baptized into one spirit, 
and having this work in first corinthians 13 12 because the baptism is in 12 13 but now the work in 13 12 he teaches to us we now see like a dim ones but when we go back we are having much more things to learn there we learn a word which says for us we all have to come to the perfection we all have to come to the full knowledge of Lord God and that's why in first Corinthians 13 12 now we see the things as if they are dim that is called as the adolescent age for us but when we go back home we will be the mature man and how we could be mature man when we are able to see the things what we are looking through the exegetical word of Lord God absolutely grown up to the full major stature of the thinking of Christ and if we haven't seen that then you will never understand why this grace was given to you above all the player of Baltimore privilege privileges given to us above all the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit above all the completed can of scripture and given to us this bona fide gifted men who are pastor teachers who will be male believers in Christ you will never understand these things therefore he has said we all need to come because right now we are still like kids even the things what we think in the 66 books if we are not able to master them these are considered in the sight of lord god as adolescent period but you have something more in the heaven to become you have to become like a mature man the manhood and that manhood is what you have been targeted. That manhood is what you have to receive conforming to the image of Christ in the church age. Dear brethren, the privacy of your priesthood in confession of our sins to master the things given to our hands. After this prayer, we shall continue. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Lord. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace to learn the word. The things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in our twenty past. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. In Ephesians 4, when we are reading the work given through the prophets, the work executed by the apostles, now the work which every church age believer has to learn from the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers is what is very essential. In verses 12 and 13 of Ephesians 4, it teaches to us that why is it we all need to come to learn the kingdom of God? Why it is all that we have to become according to the full major stature of the thinking of Christ the standards of his word to this people why is it because in Matthew chapter 13 the greatest discourse pertaining to the church age regarding the kingdom of heaven and the mysteries that have been revealed unto us while he's discoursing there he teaches to us the things which have been given unto you and even if you think you don't need them and if you don't continue according to the will of God the Father, he says, even what you have, even those things will be removed from you. Because, he said in verse 11 of Matthew 13, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of God. What is the word to know? Ginosko, to get acquainted, to get absolute pursuit of that knowledge. As you have uh, intercourse with your wife so that you can have to know her. So he meant to say Ginosko because that's a Jewish idiom for sexual intercourse between a man and a woman to get acquainted with. So he says that you have to get acquainted with what the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, the Mustorian, the things which were not known, but now it has been known to a sect of a group called the church so that you could know and walk why it is that you have all to come to confirm to the image of Christ. So what you have been kept over here to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given and then he says in verse 12 for whosoever hath to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance we have been given grace for grace the first grace what the Israelites couldn't have the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit Above all, what we are sharing, we are sharing by faith alone in Christ alone, the completed canon of scripture in our hands. 
And above all, what we are having in the church age, we are having something far great and unique that the world could ever understand. And that is nothing but under this great completed can of scripture to the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, the great grace that has been given for us is to trample Satan under our feet because of peace of God, what he made peace with God through Christ. And that grace for grace has been bestowed upon us. And it's not a small thing, dear brethren. This grace for grace, he says that you shall have more abundance. The word parousuo to exceed a fixed number. That means for the Israelites, if there were some limit, for us it is limitless. Exceeding that number to glorify God the Father, to honor Lord God the Father. Therefore, the great word for us, which has been said in Isaiah 61, 1, to preach the acceptable year of Lord God. And that's what the word we read when it meant to say the propitiation offering through every man's lip. And that's what it is to preach the acceptable that is called as doctio. That is what he has made us. Therefore, every lip which has been called under the name of Christ in the church age, being believers in the Lord, they have the power to become the sons of God. They have the power to exceedingly, abundantly glorify God the Father only by the controlling, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the word of God in it. Without spirit and biblical truth, you cannot worship my Lord. Therefore, he says, for us to exceed, you have more. And therefore, he says, whosoever hath to him, the word hath is nothing but for us echo to have and to hold. To him shall be given. The word given is didome. And what do they give? And he said, he shall have more abundance. What we have, we have now the completed can of scripture. We have the player of Paltimo privileges. But whosoever hath not... They did not receive, they did not believe, they did not accept, though he said in Matthew 23, the day before his crucifixion and all. They went along again to crucify him. Therefore, he says, but whosoever hath not, they did not regard him. And you know, a great passage for us from Isaiah 6, until when, O Lord, until when I shall teach them these things. If you have your Bibles open, it up to Isaiah chapter 6. He says over here for us, after this great vision, and then looking into this great vision, he said in verse number 11, Then said I, Lord, that is Adonai, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and then the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord had removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. The word forsaking is nothing but azuba, that is dissolution. But you in it shall be a tenth, and in it shall written, and shall be eaten, and a tail tree and an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So he's giving the again promise, when the root is taken downward, they shall be fruit upward. But over here in 11 and 10, he asks the questions, until when? How long? The same thing what happened to the people of the Israelites over here when we look in the standards of this Matthew chapter 13 in verse 12. So he says for us over here, the one who hath not, even what he hath shall be taken away. The word taken away is iro, that is to rise up and to evaluate, even that he hath that shall be removed from him. And the reasons why we learn these things, dear brethren, in the church age. Because we look from the past, the failures, and we need to learn the present life for us. You know, the great wrath of Lord God the Father. If the people do not do the work, what he has been called in Ephesians 4, that is to be the pastor teachers to fulfill 12 and 13, then quite obviously the altars will become, as he said for us in the standards of Malachi chapter 2. Over here we find a word for us, particularly in verse number well, he said for us, the Lord will cut off the man and the one who doeth it, the master and the scholar. The master is nothing but the one who is been taken charge to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That is what has waken up. And the one who is a scholar is nothing but for us, the one who would respond. 
So both he will cut off. And then he says, Out of the tabernacles of Jacob, and him that offereth an offering unto the Lord of hosts. And this have you done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears. You know what these people, they do? First of all, the altars were given good word of God. The purpose of them now in the church age is to rightly divide the word of truth. But what they have done, they have replaced with, with religion dogmas. And when they come up with rituals and no reality in them, that is to make disciples of the word of Lord God to fulfill Ephesians 4, 12 and 13. That is, until when they all could come to the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. That's what the word is. And when they do not do it, the time will come when the Lord God will cut off the master and the scholars. That's why today you don't find preachers preaching in authority in the standards of exegesis at all. They go to preach in the standards which could please their mind to think about. So what do we find? So we find that he has been cutting off, that is what, the master and the scholar, and then the what does he do? He is going to make the people to understand that they don't have now the word of God so that they should go back and return to ask God the Father to give shepherds after his own heart so that they could feed them with knowledge and with understanding. That's the only rule. That's the only purpose, dear brethren. In the churches also, the only rule for the pulpits, the pastor teachers to stand, which has been made up of wood, is for reason to say, to preach the word of God, to teach the word of God. Be prepared in season and out of season for the work of God, because your tongue should become now the pen of our describer. That's what we need to read in Psalms 45.1. Therefore, your heart could have a good matter and it could indulge and it could tell to you the truth and when it is baking to boil in it or give a good matter that will come up only by the hands of a scribe. Even David while he was making in Second Samuel chapter 8 we had an order of the people. He had number one for him in verse number 15 and following. He ruled with righteousness and justice all the days of his life. He had Joab too for his military people. For the work of priesthood he had Zodokites and he had a scribe. And that's what we need to look again, a scribe. And then he mentions the people who were for the priest in ending of those verses of that chapter. Because that shows that the things what a king could have, that is the priesthood work and the work of a scribe, and then growing up to become as a ruler of kings and having under you the team which could work for the Lord God, he has clearly mentioned the same thing in the church, as dear brethren. Every believer has been called to give spiritual sacrifice to God the Father, and he has maintained them to look in the standards of becoming number one king to witness the truth. Number two in that he has the work of a priesthood to confess his sins and get back into the fellowship of the Lord. And number three he has to grow up as grammatias. Matthew 13 52 that's what the church of Lord God should be all about in the kingdom of heaven. And that's what it is you have to grow up as Christ. And that's the whole purpose what he has given for us this work, this work in the pulpit order. But what they have made now, he says in verse 13 of Malachi 2, they have covered the altar of the Lord because they have come again to look. At least they could be a great sign for us when we weep and wail. That's what they're doing now. The pulpits today, they are just weeping and wailing and forsaking the work of Lord God. And they should ask, why is the reason to weep? If you do the work of Lord God accurately, there is no reason for you to weep. But why do you weep again? You are replacing that the work of Lord God could be done only when you weep. So here we look, he's saying that, covering, that is concealing the altar once again of the Lord God with tears. The word tears is nothing but for us weeping. And that weeping is nothing but for you, it's like a liquor for you. And then with weeping, tears with weeping, that is what a heaviness of your heart, that is what by analogy you look that, this is nothing but you bewail as if your only son is been dead. And what they do, not only just they weep and with crying out, out. The word crying out is nothing but with great groaning and lamentation. It's a time for us now to really weep and groan or lament because the pulpits are not being filled with the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers. And since there is no proper revolution or rightly dividing the word of truth, from exegesis of isagogics in the standards of categories and exposition of the word of Lord God in dispensations. It's a time for us now to really weep and ask God the Father to send shepherds after his own heart who shall take care of his flock very well in those pulpits by rightly dividing the word of truth. It's a time for us now to weep and lament.
Though you may not do it literally, the pain of your heart knows to the Lord. How, Lord, we need to build back again the kingdom. How, Lord, we need to make up these people to come back to become for you as scribes and in return go and make disciples of all the nations. You know, with Lord God the Father, all things are possible. So we need not worry. We need to just wait by preparing day by day. And as Lord God the Father sent Philip to the eunuch, so we need to be prepared. The time comes when he's going to use his spirit to lead us. The time comes how we can renovate the things. He knows very well because he is the master of it. But we are the only slaves. We go at his command. But in order to use us, first we need to be faithfully prepared. It's a time for us to really weep and groan and lament. To cry out with all of our heart with a great grief as if the death of our only son. Or daughter, whatever it could be. It's a great pain of a cry. And the reason why it's a great pen of a cry, because the people are perishing. The people have become hard-hearted. The people have become to be stiff-necked. The people have become more rebellion than Pharaoh. Though he has seen the ten plagues, he did not let the people go to serve the Lord. Though you see day by day the things of your life, though you look upon Revolution 3, 1, which says that the things that are left over in you, be careful to see that they're alive. If not, they will be also put to death. So he says, repent, change your mind, change your thinking. What the doctrine you have learned, apply it, take it with great gregarious standards, with great care, and do the will of God, and walk with him in white, defile not your garments. And yet these people don't come. And some people will come like the Gibeonites. Some people will come like the Shemites. Sheshem crowds. You know, these are the cr two crowds. They will not come like Queen Sheba all the way to inquire the details of this true life, Kea, in the Lord. What for they come? They come for the survival of this life. You know, many of the people, why they belong to Christianity today, they're just looking what will happen because there are many gods who will not go, who have not gotten resurrection. Only Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, has given the resurrection proof. So they come to believe in the Lord so that after they die, they could know their life is secured. Because they believed in Christ, as he said in John 11, 25 and 26. And that context is very, very important over there because it teaches to us resurrection. He is the only resurrection and the life. The one who is dead believing upon me, he shall live. But the one who is believing and living upon me, he shall never taste death, said the Lord. And that's what every day they will be coming up to become the heavy glory of God on this earth to glorify him to the highest. Now it's a high time for us to make the pulpits to know weeping and lamenting, weeping and lamenting, weeping and crying out. Though literally you are not weeping and crying out because of your emotional, psychological conditions of human ecstasy. But the pain of your heart knows very well how these people are perishing. The great pain what Daniel had towards his people in Daniel 10 and did not allow any pleasant food, pleasant things to happen. But the people looking not the perishing of the souls, people looking not the perishing of the own Christendom believers as well, because they're dying having no meaning at all. But Lord God the Father said for us, precious, very rare, 1, 16 and 15 of Psalms, very rare, the word translated should be very rare. Why? Because every believer is such a weapon to the Lord God. He has purchased with his great blood so that we could be now glorifying God the Father in this soul or in this flesh through the Spirit which operates in us. So, he said, they have replaced once again their altars with weeping and crying out, in so much that they regardeth not the offering any more, or receiveth it with good will at your hand. Because he says over here, in so much that he regardeth not, that is what he has turned over any more, or that is what he doesn't want to really turn over or make a things pertaining to Lord God, but he snatches it off, because he doesn't look what is exactly happening, but he is thinking that, 
that the altars which were cut off, the master and the scholar, now he, he is weeping and wailing, but he doesn't regard what is the real intent why they have to weep and wail. That's what he's saying. Because in so much that he regardeth not the offering anymore. The word offering is nothing but a tribute or a present of grace given to them at that moment. It is not that you come and give some sacrifice to the Lord or your offerings. If you are alive today, be careful to Lord God to be thankful for him because he has given you a present of his 24 hours in his life. He has given you that grace. He has bestowed you that grace. Therefore, he says, in so much that he regardeth not the offering. Every believer is not able to regard the offering given to him in this church age, the offering of being alive to Christ. If you are alive tomorrow, be thankful to the Lord. That's an offering, and he says, you haven't received it, lakak. What did you receive it? With goodwill. What is that goodwill with a great pleasure or a great desire, with a great good favor? You aren't receiving it at the power of your hand. And then he discourses, how does he begin there? Once again, he teaches about the relationship between wife and husband over here from 14. And then he comes back to the godly seed, the children. And they go on to do the things which are not at all perfect in the sight of God. But the Lord God, the Father says, you have corrupted the covenant. You haven't done that which was given to you, which was of life and peace. You haven't done that which was right in the sight of God. And at the time comes, he says, when he cut off the man and the one who doeth this, the master and the scholar, yet you come to the tabernacles to weep and to lament. And you receive not the grace given to you on that particular day. And you don't change to become once again to carry your cross every day following my Christ to become worth of his disciple. Neither you receive it, that is by lakak you take the gift of the Lord which has been given us good pleasure, the thing what we call, this word is called as rats on approval of the Lord, and yet you continue the same thing. That's what today pulpits are. But the pulpits haven't designed in such way, dear brethren. They have been said to give for us the things pertaining to grace for grace. Therefore, dear brethren, he said for us in Ephesians chapter 2, Chapter 4, not chapter 2, particularly in chapter 4, we read this great verse, the work of this bona fide ministry of the pastor teachers. He said for us in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse number 12, that for the perfecting of the saints. But what are you doing, dear brethren? Though you have been given much and expected much, what are we doing exactly to guard the Father? As a bona fide gifted man for the Lord God, are we doing the perfection of the saints? For the perfecting, the word perfecting is very important, called as katharismos. That is what you have reached, or you have to reach the destiny for what you have been called, complete furnishing. And this is what he has been calling for us, to render you to be fit. And you are very, very having Second Timothy 1, 7, sound mind. The Spirit of Lord God, what he has given for us, is sound mind, sophronismas. And that word meant to say, to get back to the senses, those who have lost the sense, because you have now the right way, the right sense, and the right thinking. He has given us a great spirit of great love and the spirit of power, dunamis. We are not just having the things of the world any longer to fear. And we have been given the mandates of the word of Lord God, agape, to be fulfilled. And then we have been made render fit. Therefore, he says, for the perfecting, for the perfecting, until and unless the pastor teaches Nagad to you the word of Lord God, you will not come for the work, what he said, for the perfecting of the saints. Therefore, dear brethren, the pulpits, what have been given for us in the church age, they have really gone, which is not according to the will of God, in daily communicating the mind of Christ, Proverbs 8, 34 through 36. Therefore, dear brethren, what is that for the perfecting of the saints? We need to look that word for us in Second Corinthians chapter 13 because the Greek context is very, very important rather than the way these people, they think they can look upon the standards of this world. In Second Corinthians chapter 13, 
we find this word in verse number 9. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong and this is also we wish. The word we wish is nothing but over here for us. This is what we pray to God, Ukumai. And what is that? You are the word followed by human and the things called as perfection, cataresis. And this is what it is for the perfection of the saints. And you go to pray for the churches. You go to pray for the homes. What do you pray? You pray so that they could have peace. You pray them you could have some great things for them. But the Bible says pray for their perfection. Pray so that they could come to the church. Pray so that they could come back and carry their cross every day and do the great and unique will of this great Lord God the Father because He has given to us in the church age in the completed canon of scripture to completely perform the mind of Christ without having any hesitation or negligence in it. Because in Jeremiah 48 10 we read this word, the word which teaches for us very specifically anyone who does the work of Lord God or occupation or the business of Lord God negligently they are already been cursed they are being counted to be human excreta the word cataresis that is not completing or perfecting that is denotes a process in its progress while cataresmos denotes a process as completed therefore dear brethren he has given for us over there for the perfecting of the saints in Ephesians 4 12 called as cataresmos that is nothing but the process is being completed but but over here in 2 Corinthians 13 9 while we are here on this earth we need to show the process in progress this is called as cataresis and that is called as catarisma but the word of Lord God gives the power, the power of becoming the pastor teachers in the bona fide gift so that we could show to you that you are perfect and complete in the process known as catarismos and these things you will not find over here in the English translations, dear brethren. That's why Lord God the Father has given every believer to understand the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the unction which has been given for us, which is nothing but to daily teach the word of Lord God in Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. And how much of the things you need to yet study, you have replaced that. You have replaced by your filthy look here of attracting men. You have replaced to look great in the sight of men in your appearance. You have much of the time to prepare yourself in sitting around and licking around the standards of this foolish man to impress men by being good to them. But you have forgot to impress Lord God by becoming his bond slave. Therefore, we don't call you to be shepherds. We don't call you to be pastors or reverence, or idiotic thing, whatever you have kept for your name. We call you to be idiotic morons, making the people to believe lies. You don't make them to believe what is the truth in Christ. Therefore, he said he gave this gift. For what purpose? As we read in Matthew chapter 13 in verse 12, the one who has, much will be given to him. That is what conforming to the image of Christ. That's our ultimate goal. That's the reason we ask you every day to come to learn Bible doctrine. That's the reason we ask you, if you don't follow the Lord God by carrying your cross every day, you're not worth to be his disciple. And if you're not a disciple and following my Lord God, you're not at all worth. You may think you have done 101 things on this earth which could make you to be pleasing to God the Father. But he said in the book of Revelation chapter 3 to the people writing to Sardis, I haven't found your occupation perfect before God. Again, the word over there, we need to look, what is that perfect? Because in the English, the word perfect, either it has to mean teleleos or it has to go back further to look upon this word called as plero. But over here in Revelation chapter 3, in verse 1, when he's commanding that, saying that your works were not found perfect, here he's talking about the word plero. But over here in Ephesians 4, 12, when he's writing about the word for the perfecting of the saints, he's saying, Catarismos. 
And now you just look what the work of a pastor teacher is all about. Where does he have the time to show off himself? Where does he have the time to go back and waste in looking and sitting around in pastor's conferences? And you know, in my country, India, we find in my place itself, being making themselves a pastor's fellowship and making themselves to look along into the standards of this world, what do they spend the time? They spend most of the time chit-chatting, idiotic things, moron things. And they not even have a sense to look what are these words, why they have been written like this, what the word of Lord God's will is over there and why it has been given over here in this manner. If it is over here in Revelation 3, 1, Plero, or why it is over there in Ephesians 4, 2, El Rismos. And they will never correct these things because their belly has been feeding them for the food. And they have that not with heart and soul in their blood. They come to become shepherds for their belly, for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. That's it. The God is their belly. The glory is their shame. Therefore, they once again crucify my Lord every time. Can they justify they're really preaching the word of God without exegesis, without Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic? Without having this study, without having to look what is this plero over here in Revolution 3 1 and what is the word katarismos in Ephesians 4 2? Do you think they can look upon these things? No. Because they are coming for the food they eat. They are not coming in their heart and soul in the blood to live. Therefore, these are not bona fide gifted men. These are a cult of a people developing cults under the name called to be pastors. These are apostasy oriented men. These are the way what we read in Malachi 2.13, weeping and wailing before the Lord. But they're not able to receive the grace given to them. They're not able to lack it and found the work of Lord God to be to the highest. And what they're doing, they're just idiotic morons to the cause. The things what the altars were designed were to preach the word of God. That's what we read in Numbers chapter 23, when Balaam was being hired by Balak. He comes and he says for us the lesson which every believer should learn. The same thing we read in Jeremiah chapter 2. If you have your Bibles, open it up. We shall look it in Numbers chapter 23 because these words are very, very important. The things pertaining to 23rd chapter in verse 7, when the word we looked that he took parable and said, Balak the king so and so the Moabite that brought me from Aram or the daughter of the mountain saying, Come curse Jacob and come defy Israel. And he says in verse 8, How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defile whom the Lord hath not defiled? The same thing what we learn from this. What Lord God the Father has made every man, every believer, particularly in the church age, to be holy and blameless. But how are we becoming cursed? We shall look that in Jeremiah chapter 2. He says there particularly about the description, how he was with the people of Israelites. And he claims there a thought for us to understand that the things pertaining to say, go and cry out in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, I remember thee, the kindness of the youth, the love of the espousals, that is what the love of being anged together. And then when you went after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown, that is always you were waiting for my direction. The same thing we read that in Numbers chapter, the chapter 9, when we read particularly the last few verses of the chapter, beginning with verse 13 till to verse number 21 or 23, we read that when the cloud moved, they moved. Though it was for two days or one month or one year, they stood, they stood there forever. Till the cloud could move, they moved, though it was day or night. When the cloud halted, they halted. You know, what does it mean to say? The same thing, when you went after me in the wilderness. The word went is nothing but your course of life, your manner of life, your lack. If ever you live, you live for Christ. If ever you were be available, you were available only for Christ and nothing else. That's what it meant to say. After me, the word called as ekar or the things that were with me, were in the wilderness. Wilderness is a place where there was no pasture. So in that land, an uninhabited land, where there was no habitation at all, 
you were with me wherever I went, and in a land that was not sown, the word there was no seed. And then he says, Israel was holiness unto the Lord. In verse 3 of Jeremiah 2, we read what? Israel was holiness. And today also you have been called before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless unto my Lord. How? When you walk after him. We are living in this wilderness of this pilgrimage trip. If you don't walk after him, no matter what, as a pastor, teacher, the man that's given to you, Ephesians 4, 12 and 13 to be fulfilled. As a believer, what is the work? As Matthew chapter 10, verse 13, verses 52 teaches to us, you have to join as disciples and grow up as grammatias, taking up your cross every day and following my Lord, being deaf and blind to the world. If you don't do that, you are not holiness unto the Lord. And that's what he re we read, growing up in grace on the knowledge of Bible doctrine of Second Peter 3, particularly to understand that we are following Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, and nothing else than that. You are following, I don't deny. That's why there are many Christians in this world. But they are not true Christians, biblical-oriented Christians as disciples joined and growing up as grammatias. And the problem there is because you don't find the shepherds after the mannerism of Lord God's own heart. Their heart and soul and blood doesn't have this truth. In order to have that in your heart, soul and blood, you have to be given the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church. And the one who are occupied in his business, they never mind the earthly things. They don't even have time, they would say to the Naaman, as the way Naaman came to that Elisha, he said, doesn't even look at him, go and wash in that water. But today you find pastors available for every silly, stupid things, counseling them and making them to become as the people, as their own, as we read that in Matthew 23. And they make them to be worse than the cults. And the progeny continues again and again. The same terms goes on again and again. From one generation to next generation. If we would look back again, they will be the same. Though in the 17th century, William Carey came along, gave them such kind of a solid doctrine to understand their life, they rejected, they kept apart. At least now it's the time for us to enlighten in the, in the things of this enlightened technology. Yet they will not listen nor look and what do they want to look? What do they want to hear? Their itching ears, what it would please them to look. Because they have sowed down to such kind of a dilution in their thinking, dear brethren, that they don't want to accept the truth any longer. It has become alien for them. And that they will say they are Christians. They will claim that they are Christians. But are you really a true Christian to walk after the holiness of the Lord? That's what he said in 2.3 of Jeremiah. Israel was holiness unto me. How it could be holy to the Lord God until and as you walk according to the demands of the word of Lord God. Because he has made us to be before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless, being far away and free from the nidda. That's what we read the word in Ezra chapter 9. In verse 12 to following, teaching to us what is this world from mouth to mouth, from extremity to extremity. What do you find? You will find these people as menstrual stricken, sickened men. That's what he said. Their uncleanliness, what we look in Ezra 9, love, and it meant to say, Nidda. It's an absolute standard of the menstrual sickness. From them, he has separated us and called out and kept us for only one purpose, to be holy and blameless. And that to prove we are holy, we need to walk as the word of Lord God demands. In order to know what the word of Lord God demands, the first thing is, you need to come back to learn the word in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. For your perfection, catarismos, the process to be progressed and reaching its goal. And that's what we read in Second Corinthians 39. This is what we wish, your perfection, 
day by day to reach your goal, day by day to go ahead and carry your cross, living behind those things which are not worthy, looking forward unto the high calling of Lord God and marching ahead. But he says over here in Jeremiah 2, 3, Israel was holiness unto the Lord. And over there Balaam says in Numbers chapter 23 in verse 8 How could I curse and defile the people whom Jehovah Adonai has not cursed, neither he has defiled? Then who is it it is making defiled and making yourselves to get cursed? It is your own old sin nature. The, old, the word sin is nothing but for you to miss the mark. And what do you miss the mark? You miss the mark in coming every day to the church. You miss the mark to join as disciples. You miss the mark to grow up as grammatias. That's what your sin nature does. And how does it begin with? It begins with ignorance and later on it becomes an arrogance because you will find shepherds after your own hearts, not by the heart of Lord God, because those shepherds also will claim you to come weekly once to the church because they are happy to get from you the tithes, though the, though the New Testament doesn't talk about the tithes. And they ask you to give every mannerism of rituals to be there because you are both like-minded as the people, so the shepherds. But you will not find the shepherd which has been from Lord God's own heart. If he would come in his heart and soul and blood, there would be only one thing. Go and make disciples. Join as disciples, grow up as grammatias, and in return go and make disciples of all the world. There is no boundary for us. It is all the world. Because the word of Lord God has given to them, go and get that ass or cult. In Mark chapter 11, that was before resurrection. And now, after resurrection, looking upon the power of Christ, where is the death and the sting of it? You know, it's in our fears. It's in our thinking, because we don't have in us the thinking of Christ. And as long as we don't have in us the thinking of Christ, we are not walking holy to the Lord. But in the wilderness, he said, Jerusalem, that is what Israel, went after and then he said, He followed me in the wilderness, and it was holiness unto the Lord, the first fruits of his increase. And the first fruits is nothing but Rashi'eth, being the chief one of its increase. What is that increase? Tebu'ah, that is what the revenue. The same thing in Hebrews chapter 12 we find. The church is the first fruit of his great mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, indwelling people. Then how much more we have to be more fruitful to the Lord. So we find over here to learn that all that devour him shall offend. That is what if they love to have any revenge against you, that is what to devour up or to burn up, he says they shall offend. That is what they will be trespassed. Evil shall come upon them. The second word, or evil, the unpleasant things will enter into their life. And then this is what said the Lord God. And now Balaam teaches to us to understand. How shall I curse? How shall I see such kind of an unpleasant thing will enter? Or any mannerism of offending things would be there. How shall I make them to be excreta? Or how shall I make them in the standards to be called as za'am or express or denounce against them that they are defiled? Because the Lord God has himself not defiled, neither cursed them. Then how these people, they turned out to become aliens to God the Father. You know how? Compromise. In everything you come for compromise. The rituals which the parents have to teach to the children. We read that in Deuteronomy 6. They compromised. Diligently teach this thing to your children. Compromised. The godly seed given for the godly parents. Compromised. Forgetting that these are the true seed for Lord. That's why we find a great prayer in Ezra 9 for them. How we shall sin again because of the grace that you have been given unto us. We are ashamed. We are not able to lift up our head. Yet you have been always gracious unto us, O Lord. They are also, they compromised. You know why you slack and become sickened? You get compromised in your mind. 
We don't believe the word of Lord God, neither the power given to us through the Spirit of God. You compromise. Because you are not making up your body to be always bigger and well. For the work to be fit for the Lord's glory to the highest. So what do you do? You compromise. And how does compromise come in? Negligence. And how does negligence come in? Because you don't love the Lord. You know the relationships they break up. When you neglect the relationship, it goes on to compromise not to give proper cares. And then quite obviously it shows that why you neglect or why you have that compromise level because you don't love them. But if you have an intense love to the Lord, you know, have you ever seen the love between a male and a female when they truly love to each other? They eagerly wait to see each other, isn't it? That's what it is now. We, the church, haven't seen our true love in the heaven. If you truly eagerly wait to look upon him, then you would be occupied with his word, with his mind, with his thoughts. And yet the word of Lord God teaches to us the things what we are seeing is temporal. But the things which we haven't seen, what we will be looking in the heaven is permanent. And yet we walk by faith to look those things which are permanent, having enough faith to impress Lord Hebrews 1 and Hebrews 11, 1 and Hebrews 11, 6. Without which it is impossible to please God. It's an evidence of the things not seen. You don't have that love because you don't believe the word. How could two walk together? He said, until unless they have agreed to do so. Do you agree to believe the words of my Lord? Then you can walk with him. That's faith. Believing his word is faith. And you have an intense love towards him. So you continue with him. But you don't have love. You don't have enough trust in his word. You become negligent. And what happens? You become absolutely failure. You get to come to the standards of compromise and the relationships broke up. The same thing is happening right now in the churches as well. In everything what you do, compromise. You don't carry your cross every day, follow to my Christ. And you may think, what is this that we need to listen every day? But dear brethren, this is the fate of your life. If you don't become grammatiers joining as disciple, there is no work with you. He said, I will blot out your name. But those who walk with me in white, I will never blot out their name. How you would walk with Lord God the Father in white, wearing the white dress to the Lord? Just forget it. White represents the splendid glory of Lord God, which you have to get on this earth, moving from glory to glory in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. That's the splendid glory which has been given for us. How to acquire that splendid glory, you cannot get by yourself because the pastor-teacher work is to give you by daily teaching because that's the gift given to them for the perfection of your saints. And every believer is a saint in Christ. And that's what every believer has to lead his life to reach its end. The process to be progressed to reach its complete goal. That is what the word katarismos. And yet, dear brethren, until when? In Ephesians 4.13, we find the word till we all come, but the Greek word mekre over there meant to say until when? Until all the people could come to the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. But we are also following the same path as Isaiah chapter 6 verse 11 teaches to us. How long, O Lord? Because they have become ruined, they have become destroyed, they have become absolutely desolate. The concepts what the Bible demands, they have been compromised. What are the demands of the word of Lord God? If you would ask any believer why you believe in Christ, he would simply say, my father was a believer or I believe in Christ so that they gave me some money to believe a Christian so that I could get some a piece of a land. That's what you will find because the foreigners will fund them and these morons will send the pics of these people and they will say, when we get some fund, we will allot a small piece of land. Therefore, you become a believer. And that's what the schemes 
to use the word scams. Schemes, they call to the people, but we call them as scams. Everything you go, you become scams. The church, what for it is, they completely forgot. Ask them why you are a believer in Christ. In First Peter, we find if anyone would ask you, what is the reason that you are believing in Christ, you should be able to answer them back in chapter 3. The reason why you believe in the Lord. And to shut the mouth of this foolish and ignorant and arrogant man is the will of God the Father. And who are these foolish, ignorant and arrogant men? The people who haven't learned the mind of Christ. The people who haven't come to look the burden of the Lord. The people who would waste their time running around in canteens, showing off well to the people, but inward they are dead man bones. They love to look up here before man good, but inward man, they don't meditate upon the word of Lord God. They don't come to preach the mind of Christ. They don't come to look what is the difference in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and teach them the truth. Are you feeding your people, particularly your own kids, rotten food? Will you ever feed your congregation with rotten spiritual food? With your own prejudiced minds. But indeed you are doing that for centuries together. But when it comes to your own flesh, when it comes to your own food, when it comes to the kids of your own people to give them food, you love to give them hygiene, that which is sound doctrine. Because who ye know the word what we read in 2 Timothy 4 is sound. You want always for you hygiene food, isn't it? Would you drink a contaminated water? No. Because you know very well it will destroy your absolute systems of working in you. But when the word of Lord God, what he will do about that? Do you think the feeding what you are giving to the churches is a sound one? Without having to know the difference between what is there in the original languages of the scriptures and the translations with which you are going, they do not match the will of God. Till that time you may be thinking you are doing good, but you are not at all doing good. You are feeding the congregation sheer ruts, which is not at all the truth. At the most you will come to talk about the gospel. At the most you will come to talk about the moral way of living, refining your old sin nature. At the most you will ask them to pay for you some gifts so that they could be consoled in their heart that they have done good to the shepherd so that good could come to them. Just forget it. He said, I will cut off the master and the scholars. I will destroy the man. Because they don't do the will of God. Because you haven't come to look upon the driving force of the word of God. And yet, dear brethren, what is happening in the church age? Though the word of Lord God is given for us for catarismos process, though the word of Lord God said for us in Matthew 13, 12, the one to whom they have, even they will be given more, but the one who haven't had, even that they will be removed off. That's what it happened to the Israelites. Will the same fate occur to you? What you will do? You know how you have been removed out? You have been removed out by coming weekly once to the church. You have been removed out by not carrying your cross every day and following at the Lord's Gate Temple to wait and to learn discourse. The true and the high calling in the church age. For every individual believer, they should walk holiness unto the Lord. But rather walking holiness unto the Lord, what they have become, they became corrupted, dear brethren. So he said for us in Jeremiah chapter 2 that if there is anyone that will try to make the things upon you, that is what if there were any things that they would try to devour you or offend you, evil shall easily take over them. And now he comes in verse number 4. Hear you the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus said the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers? The reason from where he begins? He begins with your fathers. The word Ab. The main person in the home. Father. 
the great mandate given to the father to train up your children the way that they should go. Halaklanat. If the father is not looking upon the children that they have to have number one priority for the word of Lord God, then that family, though they might have provided the best, it's absolutely vain and vague because they haven't given them which is the only best in the world which is nothing but the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Even if you would sit with your children and you would love to teach them, teach them the word of Lord God in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. There is no need for teaching them any stories. Teach them the truth. Because time is already short for us. We cannot be the people to waste our time in silly stupid things, teaching them lies teaching them some concepts which do not match the word of Lord God. What we need to teach, teach them the truth, teach them the truth, teach them that which is absolutely eligible in the sight of Lord God to be accepted. Train them up right from their kids. And that's the work he says, what iniquity have your fathers, the word found is matzah, they have encountered to me. Or what wrong I have did to them. Though Balaam asked to curse and defy, Balaam says, I cannot curse and defy because Lord God himself hasn't cursed and defied those people. Then who is the, who is the origin for them to be defiling themselves? Their own heart, their own all sin nature, their own flesh, their own rebellion activities to get compromised. Everything begins with compromise. As long as you compromise, you're not worth. He said, anyone who puts his hand to plow and turn back is not worth to the kingdom of God. Luke 9, 62 and 61. Putting your hands to plow and you turn back, compromise. Do you think are you worth? He said, no, you're not worth. In everything you want, compromise, but you're not worth. You've already been said, not fit, not rendered to be fit for the kingdom of God. The time in the past they had rituals, we have now the reality. The reality is nothing but to take up your cross every day and grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, conforming to the image of my Christ. That's the reality for us today. We cannot compromise. It begins with the failure of your fathers. Because fathers have known, if ever they have known, because these were the ones who were there with the time of Moses and the people of Joshua, But later on when they came, the time comes, we look. In Joshua 24, he said, Me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. But these people, they said, We shall also serve the Lord. He said, You cannot serve the Lord. If you find that word for us in the book of Joshua, it has to be somewhere around in chapter 23. And he goes on to say particularly that, in verse 13 and following, saying, Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more dry out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, the scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes, until you perish of, from of this good and good land, which the Lord your God hath given you. And behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth, and you know in all of your hearts and all of your souls that no one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord our God has spoken concerning you, and all are more come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed. Therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you which the Lord God hath promised you, so shall the Lord also bring upon all the evil things until he have destroyed you from this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. When you have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God which he commanded you and you have gone to serve other gods and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and you shall perish quickly from of the good land which he hath given unto you. So this is what he says for us to understand over here, saying that, take good heed, therefore unto yourselves, that you love the Lord your God, else if you do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations. That's what the fathers failed, because to walk with him we need to walk in uprightness of our heart. So they could not have that uprightness and straightforwardness with the Lord, so what they do? They go back to cleave. And they went to remain among them, they made marriages unto them, and they did what of these things which he had told them. Therefore in Joshua 24, maybe we find that word saying to them, 
in verse number 15 yes it says that in verse number 15 if it seem evil unto you to serve the lord choose you this day whom you shall serve whether the gods of your fathers so that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the amorites in whose land you dwell but as for me and my house we shall serve again the word is very important abad that meant to say we shall be slaves unto the lord god and the people answered and said god forbid that we should forsake the lord to serve other gods the word for forbid is nothing but for us kalyal that meant to say god forbid or let it not come to pass and then for the lord of a god he is that brought us up out of the fathers out of the land of egypt from the house of the bondage and which had did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed and the lord drew out from people before us the people even the amorites which dwell in the land therefore we will also serve the lord for he is our god and joshua said unto the people verse 19 you cannot serve the Lord and with what intention he might have said that because he knows very well the rebellion nature in them the word yakal you cannot prevail you cannot endure you cannot have that power for what to serve again the word abad meant to say to be the slaves since for he is an holy god and today as well the same option stands for us good as well walking with lord god in the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit and in biblical truth to understand that he is a holy god he is a jealous god the word jealous meant to say angry god hmm people will never understand why they get this spiritual anger the word meant to say causing to be jealous anger God and then he will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins until and unless you come back with rebound if you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you the word hurt for you is nothing but ra'a evil and then the word consume is nothing but for you to accomplish and to seize off after that he hath done you good and the people said unto Joshua no but we will serve the Lord and then he said you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen you the Lord to serve him and they said we are the witnesses that is the earth now therefore put away said he the strange gods which are among you and incline your heart that is what once again to make up your heart not to stretch out and to extend to look upon the Lord God of Israel and all the people said unto Joshua the Lord of a God we will serve and his voice we will obey the same thing what we also do when we believe in Christ so Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statutes that is nothing but the prescription demands of the word of Lord God and also the word called as Mishpat, the, the things pertaining to the judgments in Shechem and Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak tree that was by the sanctuary of the Lord and Joshua said unto all the people behold this stone shall be a witness unto us for it hath heard all all the words of the Lord that's why we say you all the time besides nature the entire angelic host it has heard all the words of this Lord which he spake unto us it shall therefore be a witness unto you lest you deny your God the word deny is kakash that is to deceive and make him to become a lie or a fail or to grow disappointing to be insufficient to meet the demands of Lord God so Joshua let the people depart every man unto his inheritance and then it came to pass when Joshua was 110 years old then he died and they buried him under the border of Timanarashat, which is in Mount Ephraim, in the north side of the hill of Gash. And Israel of the Lord all the days of Joshua, all the days of the elders, in verse 31, that overlived Joshua, and which had known all the works of the Lord, that he had done for Israel. And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Egypt, of Israel, brought up out of the Egypt, buried them in Shechem, in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for an hundred pieces of silver, and it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. 
himself. And Eliezer, the son of Aaron, died, and they buried him in a hill that pertained to Phinehas, his son, which was given him in Mount Ephraim. But we look over here, and in verse 31, And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders. Again, Zacchaeus, the old one, the elder in authority, that overlived. The word overlived is nothing but to have long, and then yom, the life of his day, and then after, that is what even the life 110 years, what Joshua had more than that, what these people lived. Till that time they could live, they all served Jehovah. Because they had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. But what went wrong? They did not teach to the children. Therefore he says in verse number 5 of Jeremiah 2, 3, What iniquity have your fathers found in me? So that they are gone far from me. The word far is to become far, rakak, and have walked after vanity. He calls anything that is against the word of Lord God on this earth as well, you being Christians. He claims to be hebel, that is nothing but absolutely vain and vague, unsatisfactory of your transitory elements on this earth. That doesn't give you any satisfaction. You bow down to an idol. Does it give you any satisfaction? He claims the same thing in Jeremiah 7.25. What the people they have, they have nothing but a stock of doctrine of vanities. That doesn't give you satisfaction, dear brethren. Therefore, he said, those things of vanity, of emptiness, and this will become absolutely vain. And therefore, he simply says over here, they walked after vanity, and what do they become? They became habal, that meant to say, absolutely filling with vain hopes. The present Christendom as well is also being filled with vain hopes. They haven't come to become the shepherds. They haven't come to become the true disciples. They haven't come to become the true grammatias. What they have been filling you up, they're filling you up with vain hopes. And as long as I've been filled to become a vain hop, you're walking behind vanity. But the right duty is said in Ephesians 4.12, perfection of the saints. We are reading only one. Because the word katarismos, to reach the process to be progressed, Perfection of the saints. What a sad thing it is for us to work. That men today do not understand what is this perfection of the saints. And what they are walking with? They are walking with the vanity of their mind. Filling their minds with vain hopes. By daubing them with untempered mortar. Breaking not their fallow ground. Filling them with every mannerism of transitory, unsatisfactory things on this earth. And yet they think they are really filling up for the perfection of the saints. Dear brethren, the things that we need to walk with Lord God demands holiness. Whatsoever He is, we have to walk according to His terms. It is not what we want in our mind to make up in the church. If the church has been programmed for this purpose, designed by Christ the Lord of our God to be the head of the church, it's better for us to close all our nine holes and simply follow with great obedience the word of Christ, which has been given for us in the Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Apart from that, you are prejudiced plans. Apart from that, you are vain vague of thinking. Apart from that, whatever you may think that's perfect for you in your mind, if it doesn't match the word of Lord God, just forget it. You are making the people to walk in lies yet, rather than making them to repent, change their mind, metanoia, once again, and come back and follow my Christ. What a sad thing it is for us to know. That this church age believers, called to be far greater than the Israelites, called to be far greater than John the Baptist, even the least one, they are undoing the will of God. Dear brethren, when you will reach your catarismos process, when you will wish the perfection, 
that is to process to reach your goal. After you die, the thing what we work right now in this earth, in this pilgrimage trip, this is the beginning of the time, to begin with the beginning of the times, to follow one after the another when we go back home. Even the short span of time of a pilgrimage trip, today we are, tomorrow we are not. Even in the short span of pilgrimage time, though it may be for 120 years, even that's short in the sight of God. Because one day with Him is like 1000 years, isn't it? Your two to three hours of drama that is for 80 to 120 years on this earth. Even in this two to three hours of your drama, you don't want to be faithful to the Lord. The work of Satan to, de to deceive you from the truth. And these are satanic agents for you not to teach you the truth. These are satan emissaries. Always making you to believe lies upon lies and never making you to believe the truth in Christ. Therefore they don't teach you the truth because they do not know the truth but they yet become famous in this life because they want to deceive the flock. Always the disciples will be few in number. Vague and vain men will be large in number because they love to be that which is compromised. But the people who do not compromise will be with Gideon like ten people who were there with him in doing the will of God. There will be men like Joshua to go and do the will of God. Even though it is night, they would come instantly for the help when Lord God said, I have given them in your hand, go and do it. He came back even in the night. He did not even wait till the morning could come. And yet, dear brethren, for the grace bestowed upon us, what are we paying back to God the Father? Do you know what you pay back? You pay back always grief, squelching. The indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, though we talk these terms anthropopathism, you are doing it. You are failing, my Lord. You are not performing what the Bible demands at all. What a shame it is for us. As Ezra claims in 9.15, it's a shame for us, O Lord, to lift up our head before Thee. Though You have given us such grace, we are not able to build back. It is a shame for us. Therefore, it is always better to be alone than to be in a bad company, dear brethren. Better to be the will of Lord God rather than mingling with the people and to forsake the will of Lord God. Because we are answerable to Lord God and not and never to this man. This man may have their shepherds because when they eat their food, they may gain the strength to preach. But it's in our heart, soul and the blood, followed by the Spirit, controlling it. It's not for the food we serve the Lord. We serve the Lord for His glory. And people may think what it is to preach every day. If you don't preach every day, you die. The day will be counted for us to be dead if we don't communicate the mind of Christ for us. Because much is the battle given for us and yet the time is short. Because we do not know when is the rapture, we do not know when is the death. But yet we need to be prepared to meet our Lord in fulfilling John 11, 25 and 26. Though he believeth upon me and liveth, he shall never see death. What work we have in the heaven to go back. Just to be there happy with the saints. The real work is now till the rapture of the church or the last breath you breathe on this earth. The work is now. The demand is now. We know worse things will come in apostasy because people are looking upon to compromise with religion activities. But we need to stand firm in our thinking not to get compromised. You love the Lord God, stand firm in loving the Lord God no matter what. Do not neglect your first love. Do not soil your clothes of your white ones given to you. Because it is Lord God who fighteth in you the battles of him. But you be standing firm and prepared to walk in the holiness of his will. 
all the days of your life that you have breath in this nostrils on this earth. Not even a single breath to be taken out of the fellowship of the Lord. If ever we sin either by thought, word, I did get back through fellowship, through rebound. Because that's the priesthood work given for us. And be mindful to become scribes, joining as disciples, growing up as grammatias. And let's do the great and unique will of this great and unique Lord God the Father in heaven because there is none like him he claimed in Exodus 9.14 that the whole earth should know that there is none like such Lord God. <laughs> and we are his representatives now. Up to what extent we shall be qualified. Up to what extent we shall be the men of his Lord. Up to what extent we will be the church for his glory. You need to think about these things very clearly, dear brethren, since the time is short, the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. And the working of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which worketh in us to the praise of His glory, we need to be always available in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, being graduated to the will of God in doing His work. Dear brethren, think over these issues. As we shall come back and continue, as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory, if possible tomorrow, if not, how the Lord God the Father leads us day after tomorrow. We shall look upon these things. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you is so very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thorn lagan. Herald the word in season, out of season, because the Dharma Trima witnesses for which you have been called. And number one Dharma Trima witnesses in willing trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two, Dharma through my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire and the coast will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, or day after tomorrow. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us to have fellowship through the word. For the perfection of your saints, O Lord, Catarismos, you have given us this bona fide gift. Through us, O Lord, in our heart, soul, and blood, in the Spirit, O Father, you work out your will, so that at every breath alone you could be glorified for the grace upon grace which you have bestowed upon us. To this section, Father, we pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit would enlighten and challenge us by this message. We ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen.